Ahmed Taha. Can anyone say that? Try to say that with me. Ahmed Taha. You gotta stand like five feet back when he says your name. This guy. Now, this all started when I decided to take an internship 3,000 miles away from home. Uh, I'm from New York, I grew up there, and I took an internship here in the Bay Area. So I get here with nothing but a dream. I had not a lot of money, no car, and a dream hope. And I did have one friend. And that friend gave me a newspaper. And in that newspaper, I saw an ad for the cheapest apartment I could possibly find. And it was right there in Sunnyvale. So I call him up, and he says, oh, no problem, $500, I'll put you in tomorrow. Click, and he hands up. Wow, that was easy. So I show up, and this guy, he's a nice guy, his name is Ahmed Taha, and he's got a belly out to here, jolliest man you can find. And he says, no problem, no problem, I'll give you a bedroom. And he gave me a bedroom, and that night, I was in my first spot in California. But then another guy walks in, and he's from France, and he's sitting in that bedroom. And another guy walks in, and he's from Mexico, and he's on the couch. And another guy walks in, and he's, you know, some kid from Cupertino, and he's on the other couch. This guy rented out every square inch of that two-bedroom apartment. <laughs> and I'm thinking, man, I've, been, I've seen a lot in New York, but I don't know if I'm ready for this. <sighs> so anyway, the Chronicles of Ahmed Taha involve a lot of stories that have changed my life forever, but I'll give you two of them. The first one um, was... <laughs> Oh my gosh. The first one, we were hanging out. Actually, I was by myself on the couch, and Ahmed was mopping the floor. And he's mopping the floor, and this guy drives up in front of the house. And he starts shaking his fist out of the window like this, and just yelling at him from outside on the street. The windows are closed, the doors are closed, and you can still hear him. And it's in some language I don't understand, but it was not good. And he drives away. And Ahmed looks up, he mumbles, and he keeps mopping. Okay, I thought nothing of it, blew it off. Then he comes back around a block and stops by again. <laughs> and he starts doing the same thing. And Ahmed's had enough. So he's mopping the floor. Everything's wet. He says he mumbles something, blah, blah, blah. He gets up and runs down the street with this mop. And now the car is driving away. Ahmed's belly's jiggling up and down like this. And his mop is going up and down like that. And I'm watching through the window thinking, what the heck is he going to do with that mop when he gets it? And so... Finally, the guy stops the car, pulls over, and gets out. And they start exchanging words, and fists are flying, and this goes on for a good two minutes. And I'm thinking, something's about to go down. I don't know what, but it's not going to be good. And then Ahmed decides to take two steps back. He takes his broom and whoosh! He just throws gallons of dirty water all over this guy. And I'm thinking, man, you know, I've seen a lot of fight moves back home. I never saw that. <laughs> That's a pretty good one. The guy was covered in dirt, completely disgusted. And then he does it again. Boom! He covers him with dirt. And then the guy gets fed up, gets in the car, and drives away. And Ahmed walks home victorious with his mop. And he comes back into the apartment. And I'm standing there like this. And he just keeps mopping. So what do I do? I learned a lesson. Some things you just got to stay out of. And I pretended like nothing happened. <laughs> nothing happened. And I just went out of my business and I never told anyone about it for weeks. <laughs> so that's story number one. Then there was another really great Ahmed Tar story. Um, this one happened early in the morning. Now I was waking up and I finally found enough money to buy a bike. So I actually was bike to work and I was getting ready to get on my bike and all. Um, and I go outside and there's a little scuffle happening between the guy from France, which I, I didn't know his name, I called him French guy, and, and the, guy, the guy from uh, Cupertino, who I called, you know, the local kid. And um, the, they were talking about something, and Ahmed was sitting on his cot, because he rented out the rest of the living room, so he's sleeping on his cot, and there's a, they're talking about stuff, and it, I found out after a few minutes it had to do with the fact that the local kid took $20 from the French guy and never paid him back. And so finally they're going off about it, and the kid's like, I'm not giving you that back. And he's like, you must pay me back, the French guy. And then finally the French guy gets fed up and goes, you are not a man. And he turns around. And this is the little kid's comeback. He's like, you're not a man with your tight pants, right? And I'm like, I heard a lot of comebacks from New York, but I never heard that one. And so 
Finally, um, Ahmed saves the day. He comes up, he goes, okay guys, he puts his belly in front of the guy's guy and that guy. He says, okay guys, you give me $20, I'll pay him back. And then when it's done, I'll pay you back. No problem, that's it. And he sits back down on his cot and keeps watching TV. Problem solved. Know what's itself? I don't know, I just thought it was funny. Anyway, <laughs> thank you very much, Madam Tony.